We're working in intermediate algebra, section 4.3, adding and subtracting, rational expressions, and that starts on page 150 of your book. We're going to start uh, by just reviewing uh, some basic fraction rules for adding and subtracting. If you want to add two fractions, one-fifth plus two-fifths, uh, the first rule is that to add or subtract fractions, they have to have the same denominator. Um, and when you add them, that same denominator carries forward over here. So it is absolutely imperative that you remember these three numbers always end up being the same. The denominators are the same, and that same denominator moves over here. You might think this is really a basic thing, but once we start putting variables in here, students tend to do some really interesting stuff with this over here, or multiply them, add them together, or whatever it is. And then when we do the numerator, we will add or subtract, depending on what the operation is, the, the like terms in the numerator. So that will be 1 plus 2 here, which equals 3. So this turns into 3 over 5. So example 1 on page 150 says 2 over x plus 1 over x. Um, and do not forget that these three numbers, the denominators, always end up being the same. So I know a lot of students are tempted to make this 2x or x squared, but this is x, this is x, this will also be x over here. And then in the numerator, we will just add the like terms, and that will be 2 plus 1, which, is, which are like terms. So this turns into 3 over x. Example 2 is 3x over x cubed minus 11 over x cubed. And again, the denominators are the same. So this denominator over here will match these two. So this will be x cubed. The numerators will be subtracted this time, combining like terms. So 3x minus 11. And it turns out that those terms are not like terms, so that you can't actually subtract them or do anything else to simplify this. Uh, now, do not be tempted to start canceling these. We've talked about this in previous sections. This is a term, or part of a term. It cannot cancel with anything in the denominator. Example 3 says x squared over x plus 8 plus 7x over x plus 8 minus 8 over x plus 8. And again, looking at the denominators first, they are already the same. So the denominator of my answer is going to also be x plus 8. The numerators we will add slash subtract depending on what the operation is. So we'll have x squared plus 7x minus 8. And this is the beginning of our answer. Um, if you notice, this trinomial right here is a standard trinomial. We should try to factor it, because if it factors, it may reduce with this x plus 8. So the factors of x squared plus 7x minus 8 are actually x minus 1 x plus 8. Um, and if you need some review of factoring, look at some previous uh, videos there. Um, and this x plus 8 is a binomial, so what actually happens here is these x plus 8s cancel, and so our final answer is x minus 1 from this being left up here. Example 4 is at the top of page 151. It says x squared over x squared minus 7x minus 5x plus 14 over x squared minus 7x. I hope that you can resist the urge to cancel these x squares because this one's a term. These are not going to cancel. And besides that, we're trying to subtract, so we want these denominators to be the same. So don't cancel anything if you already have the same denominator here. Um, and of course, that means that the denominator for our answer is going to be x squared minus 7x, the same as these two. Now this subtraction here, we have to make sure that it hits every term behind it. So in the previous example, there was only one term. 
behind the subtraction, so it was not a big deal. This example has two terms behind the subtraction, so it might help you if you put parentheses here and then you recognize that this subtraction sign has to get distributed. So carry down the x squared, then we will have minus 5x minus 14. If you do not distribute this to every term behind it, you will end up with a wrong sign here, which then makes it really difficult if you want to try to factor it, which we should. So these factors are x minus 7, x plus 2. On the bottom, I factor x times x minus 7, just factoring out a GCF, and I can see the x minus 7 is canceling. So I have left x plus 2 over x. Now, please resist the urge to cancel these x's. This one's a term. Terms do not cancel. So this is your final answer here. Okay, so we talked about how to add and subtract when uh, the rational expressions already have the same denominator. So what happens if they have different denominators? We're going to have to find the LCD or the least common denominator. Uh, example 5 is on page 151 and part A says just to find the common denominator of these three rationals. We're not going to add or subtract them yet, we're just going to find the common denominator. Alright, I'm going to show you a way that works um, in case that you don't know this already and it's not intuitive. Um, to find the common denominator, you first list your denominators and then you break them down to prime factors. Uh, 2x is 2 times x, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and 3 is already prime. So you list the prime factors. And then the common denominator will take the whole first list. So we're going to take the 2 and the x, and that takes care of the first list. And then we'll look in the second list, and we'll take anything that we don't already have. When I look over here, I already have 1, 2, so I don't need this first 2. I'm just going to take these and that takes care of that list. And then I'll do the same thing with the third list. Do not take anything you already have. So I don't have any threes, so I'm gonna take this three. And then I multiply them all together, and I get a common denominator of, well, let's see, what is this? Two times two times two is eight, eight times three is 24. So this is 24x. That will be the common denominator for these three denominators. Okay, we're gonna try it again. On letter B, we have 1 over x, 2 over x squared, 3 over x cubed, and 1 over 5. We're not adding or subtracting them yet, we're just going to find a common denominator. So the first step is over here, list your denominators. We have x, x squared, x cubed, and 5. Break them down to prime factors. Well, that would just be x. This would be x times x. This would be x times x times x and this would be 5, prime numbers. And then you're going to start with the first list, take the whole first list, that would be just an x, look at the second list, do I have any of these? I already have one x, so I only need to take one more. Then do the same thing with the next list, okay I already have two of these, so I only need to take one more. And then the last list, I'm just going to take the 5. And when I multiply all those together, I get a common denominator of 5x cubed, which is the common denominator for these four denominators. All right, letter C is at the top of page 152. We have two more rationals, 1 over x squared minus 16 and 5 minus x over x plus 4. We are still just finding a common denominator. We aren't adding or subtracting yet. First, list your denominators, x squared minus 16, x plus 4, and then factor them. Okay, the factors of x squared minus 16, and this is the difference of squares, would be x plus 4 x minus 4. And of course, x plus 4 is prime, so I'm just going to put the parentheses around it. Now, your common denominator starts by taking 
the whole first list. So I'm going to take all of these or both of these factors for my common denominator. I'm going to take x plus 4, x minus 4, and that takes care of this first list. Then I look at the second list. Do I have any of these already? Um, do I have x plus 4? I do. I already have x plus 4. I don't need it again. So that would be it. And this will be the common denominator for these two denominators here. All right, letter D. I have three new rationals here that I'm going to find a common denominator for. 2 over x plus 1 squared, negative 3 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. I'm just going to extend that out there. And 4 over x minus 7. Now, I don't have room over here to make my list, so I'm just going to put the factors underneath each denominator, and our lists will now go down here just to save some room here. All right, x, uh, x plus 1 squared is just x plus 1 times x plus 1, so those will be the factors. x squared plus 3x plus 2 is a standard trinomial, so we're going to factor that. It's going to be x plus 2, x plus 1. And if you don't remember how to factor, again, check out some of uh, the previous videos have lots of factoring examples. x minus 7 is prime. It doesn't factor. So we're just going to put this here as x minus 7. And now to uh, find our common denominator, we will take the whole first list. So we need both of those. We need x plus 1 times x plus 1. And that takes care of the whole first list. Then we look at the second list. Do I have any of these? I already have an x plus 1, so I don't need that one, but I will take this x plus 2. And then I look at the third list. I don't have x minus 7, so I'll need to take that. And this would be the common denominator. Now, it's very complicated. You don't have to worry about ever multiplying out, but that will be the common denominator for these three rational expressions. Okay. I'm going to put examples 6 through 10 on the next video, and that will be adding and subtracting rationals that don't have the same denominator or actually finding the common denominator. So check out the next video to do some add and subtract.